Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a fantasy film, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. As night draws, three greedy thieves sneak into the Fairyland Moors to steal treasures. They are soon confronted by a winged creature. Two robbers end up captured, and only one manages to flee back to the city. The survivor rushes to meet their buyer, and hands over the mushroom man to him. When their buyer discovers the gentle and glowing tomb bloom flower among his plunder, he gladly takes it over. Ever since Aurora reigns as Queen of the Moors, peace and happiness overflow across the enchanted fairyland. With the help of the kind pixies, Prince successfully proposes to Aurora. Back to his kingdom Alstead, Prince shares the great news with his parents. King congrats him, but Queen thinks otherwise. She forces a smile on her face, and reluctantly shows her support. And then, King and Queen invite Aurora and Maleficent over for dinner at Alstead. At first, Maleficent has no intention to go, but she gives in to her goddaughter's sincere request. To gear up for Maleficent's arrival, Queen conspires to have the country making loads of iron armory. She also secretly gets hold of the spindle, which pricked Aurora earlier. Out of her love for Aurora, Maleficent journeys to Prince's kingdom, crossing over a bridge made of rattan. However, she does not expect to experience more discomfort during the dinner. Queen purposely chooses birds to be their main course, and serves them with iron cutlery. What is worse, Queen Blunden mentions Aurora's inaccurate story of being cursed, portraying Maleficent as an evil witch. To complicate the matter, she adds that Aurora should quickly tie the knot, so that she can escape the Moors, and receive her as a real human mother. At her sarcastic blasphemy and insult, Maleficent finally loses her composure, and unleashes her magic energy. In the chaos, Queen stabs King with a spindle, causing the King to fall into a death-like slumber. Queen then accuses Maleficent of the curse. Fellable Aurora believes Queen's lie, and begs her godmother to revoke the curse. Maleficent is speechless before such sabotage, and she wants to flee the palace with Aurora. To her disappointment, Aurora rejects her in disbelief, and chooses to remain in Prince's kingdom. Heartbroken, Maleficent returns to the moors with her raven and confidant, Ansem. But they are ambushed and attacked by Queen's soldiers. Maleficent is injured by an iron arrow, and falls into a river. The current pushes her to a waterfall and then to the sea. Over there, a huge winged creature of her kind rescues her, and carries her to an amazing island. Queen's blood boils when she learns that Maleficent is still alive. Since King falls asleep, she is advised by her son to kiss her husband. Without true love for King, she feels disgusted, and of course her tongue massage does not work at all. Aurora goes back to the moors to look for Maleficent. But she is told by Handsome that she does not return. On the other hand, Maleficent awakens in a brand new nest-like place, only to find her wound bandaged. Walking out of the room, she hears different voices, and becomes more curious about this unknown location. The sounds lead her to a meeting hall, where many winged fairies like her are gathered. Maleficent learns that they are the tribe Dark Fi, who migrated to live underground, following a deadly attack by the humans. Right now, they are debating on an issue that is unheard of for Maleficent. One young and aggressive leader of the Dark Fi, is fed up with such a sedentary life, and wants to wage war against man through the power of Maleficent. Another conservative leader, who has saved Maleficent earlier, disagrees with her and prefers to maintain their status quo. Later, Peaceful shows Maleficent around the underground world cultivated by the Dark Fi, and informs her of their difficulties. Maleficent comes to know that she is the last descendant of Phoenix, an ancient and strong Dark Fi ancestor. Since the Dark Fi is different from humans in various ways, they are suppressed and pursued by man. Maleficent intends to reconcile with man, so that the Dark Fi can live a free life. However, she is struck by the fact that even her daughter Aurora loses faith in her. At this time, Aurora goes back to the castle, and a cute porcupine follows her there secretly. However, Queen's cat chases the porcupine into the dungeon, where he discovers the missing mushroom. At the dungeon, Queen's lickspittle is making a powder deadly to the fairies, mixing tomb bloom flower and iron power. With just a sprinkle of the toxin, fairies will be dissolved in an instant. Queen urges to hold the wedding ceremony of Aurora and Prince in three days' time, and Aurora complies with it. At Queen's command, an invitation is sent to all fairies of the Moors. Aurora plans to wear the pixie's handmade wedding gown on her big day, but Queen has already chosen another one for her. Sensing Queen's unhappiness, Aurora realizes that she has no freedom of choice before her mother-in-law-to-be. 
This makes her miss her godmother Maleficent even more, and she regrets what she did to her. As the wedding is approaching, Queen orders her men to pick all the tomb bloom flowers from the Fairyland graveyard, so that they can create more weapons against the Fi. Out of concern for her flowers, Maleficent resolves to stop their evil acts. When Maleficent leaves for the moors, warlike and peaceful follow her through. By the time they arrive at the Fairyland, all tomb bloom flowers are swept away. Failing to protect the flowers, Maleficent bursts into anger. All of a sudden, Queen Soldier's surprise attack the Fi. Peaceful sacrifices himself to save Maleficent, and succumb to his wounds. Even though they manage to fend off the human soldiers, Peaceful's physical body finally turns into smoke and disappears. Peaceful's death prompts Maleficent to shoulder up her responsibilities as the Fi's guardian, and she makes up her mind to avenge. Denizens from the Moors dress up for Aurora's wedding, and make their way to the kingdom of Ulstead. Before the ceremony begins, Prince secretly visits his bride, and gifts her with a tomb bloom flower. When Aurora learns that the flower which grows in the moors belongs to Queen, her suspicion over the Queen rises. She goes to the Queen's fitting room, and walks through the secret pathway to the dungeon. Aurora cannot believe that Queen's conspiracy is laid bare before her eyes. From the making of the deadly powder, the abandoned spindle, to the pixies who are imprisoned in the dungeon, everything proves Queen's evil schemes of a genocidal plot. Before Aurora convinces Lickspittle to release the fairies, Queen arrives at the dungeon to hinder her. It turns out Queen used to be a princess of another kingdom. When her country suffered from extreme weather, her brother sought help from the Moors, but he did not return. Afterward, Queen's father was dethroned by his people. In the end, Queen had to marry Prince's father for a better life. In contrast to her resentment towards the Moors, her husband and son are very friendly to the fairies. So Queen has planned and prepared to eradicate the fairies by her own. By this hour, Moors denizens have gathered in the chapel to witness the wedding ceremony. To their shock, the door of the chapel is suddenly locked from outside, right after they all stroll in. Later, as the pianist presses a button of the organ, deadly toxin powder bursts out from the organ pipe, rendering the pixies powerless. To prevent further damage, one fairy jumps into the pipe to stop the powder from leaking. By her great sacrifice, the rest are saved. Back to the island, Warlike persuades the Fi to avenge for peaceful. So the whole tribe charges at the Ulstead castle, Little do they know that Queen is fully prepared for their rebellion. As Dark Fi approach the castle, Queen orders toxin bombs to be fired at them. And one by one the bombs come upon them, and explode in the air. The powder weakens the Fi in a flash, removing their magic power. As Queen is engrossed with the combat, Aurora breaks away from her room, and manages to swing into Prince's room with a bedsheet. At first, Prince regards the current war as Maleficent's revenge, but when he sees the wound of King, he is awakened that Queen is solely responsible for the tragedy. Prince tries to dissuade Queen, but her desire to massacre all fairies remains unchanged. What is worse, Queen deploys her soldier to have Prince captured. Fortunately, Prince manages to escape the captors. Aurora meets up with Handsome to free the denizens from the chapel. Before they can open the door, Queen's soldiers attack Handsome and pin him down, Suddenly with a lightning and thunder roll, Handsome transforms into an enormous invincible beast. Handsome fends off the guards, and destroys the door with magic power to release all the fairies. Maleficent, their strong and reliable guardian, descends from the cloud to join the battle. She swiftly clears the Queen's men, and confronts Queen directly. Aurora does not want Maleficent to commit any murder, so she stands in between the two mothers. As Maleficent and Aurora are engaged in a conversation, Queen shoots an iron arrow at Aurora. Maleficent pushes Aurora away to take it, instead of her. Struck by the toxin, Maleficent instantly dissolves into ashes. Aurora is in great grief over the death of her beloved godmother, and bitterly weeps before her. In the meantime, Queen hurries to announce that Maleficent has died. As soon as Aurora's tears fall on the ashes, they start moving in a swirl. To everyone's shock, finally Maleficent rises from the ashes as a phoenix. Attaining her phoenix stage and supremacy through the love of Aurora, Maleficent stops the war at once. Knowing she will be doomed, Queen pushes Aurora off the tower to distract Maleficent, so that she can run away. Maleficent immediately spreads her wings to save Aurora from the fall, and covers Aurora with her body. Under her protection, Aurora lands unscathed. After Maleficent confirms that Aurora is unharmed, she changes into fairy form to deal with Lickspittle. Repenting from his wrongdoings, Lickspittle immediately submits to her the spindle, which was used to hurt Aurora and King. 
Maleficent destroys the spindle, and breaks the curse, awakening King from his slumber. At the same time beautiful flowers start to bloom, decorating the broken castle. To punish Queen for her sins, Maleficent turns her into a goat. In the end Maleficent walks Aurora down the aisle at her wedding, a couple tie their knot, in the blessings of both the human kingdom and fairy kingdom. Peace is forged across the two countries. Maleficent leads the Dark Fly back to the moors, and promises to come back for the christening of Aurora's baby in the future. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.